Good morning, everybody. Although it may not be morning where you are, it's morning where I'm at. And I'm up very early this morning trying to catch up on everything Foodie Beauty because I have been away and I wasn't feeling well. So I'm just trying to catch up on all of the lives that she's been doing. So the live that I'm covering today is one that she did a day ago called Thailand Bizopolis. And I've heard around the way from those who have watched it already that she is rather smug in this react. Like she's just putting out the vibe of where's your Thailand vacation and rubbing it in people's faces. So I want to take a look and give my thoughts on it. And I welcome all of you to watch along with me and uh, listen and give your thoughts down below in the comments section. So let me just go ahead and pull up her live. And I did notice something very peculiar with this live. And I want to point it out to everybody. So here's Chantal. And this live was posted a day ago. But notice the amount of comments. There's not that many. Normally when she posts a video or she does a live and she puts it up, there's a crap ton of comments. So it's pretty obvious, Chantal, you are editing your comments and only leaving the nice ones and anything negative you're getting rid of. Just trying to put out the vibe of everybody that comes to my channel supports me when that's not the case. You're just trying to edit out all of the negative and keep only the positive. But I digress. Let's go on to the actual live. And before we get started, my God, woman, you're on vacation with Salah. You look awful. You look absolutely awful. You look exhausted. You look tired. You look like you haven't slept in days. What is going on? Vacations are all about having a good time, looking and feeling refreshed and happy. You, <laughs> you look bait. Look, I said it. She looks bait. I know they have green shops over in Thailand. Have you guys been partaking of that? I just, I have to know. You look like you haven't slept in a week. You look so bad, so incredibly bad, but... You know, enough with that. Let's get started with the react. But she doesn't look well, does she? She looks terrible. Absolutely terrible. Let's go. Oh. Do you guys have me on notifications? <laughs> I'm hyper a little bit. Now, that's very sus by itself. When has Chantal ever been hyper? When is the last time we've heard her use that phrase, I'm hyper? The last time that I can recall was when she was with Natter and she was doing the powder. Chantal, she doesn't eat very well at all. She doesn't eat healthy food to give her energy. She's always relied on chemicals to give her energy. So whenever she says, I'm hyper, well, what happened? Did you drink too much coffee? Are you doing too much of something else? Where's all this energy coming from? Because normally you have none. Christina, I'm so happy you finally caught a live. Hello, Tracy, 21 months visa. You seem to be having such a great time. Enjoy. Ready, send me this, Tracy. <laughs> Ready, send yeah, definitely hyper. Something's going on here. That Thailand reviews. Thank you. Thank you for being with me this long. Hi, Nikki Chair. Cricket, hello, Tangerine, Shakespeare. <laughs> you were wishing for me to go live. Energy egg. Egg gives you energy. Hi, PMAC. Polo. Hi, everybody. Rhonda Beezer. <laughs> What's up, guys? So, yeah, I'm uh, still in Thailand. Gemini Gem, 18 months, Loyalty Beezer Club. Wow. I can't believe it. 18 months you've been a Loyalty Beezer. Thank you so much. <laughs> wow, Emily Slime. Hi. Hi, Teardrop. Hello, girl. Joel, hello. Ava, hi. Ageless Beauty. I love saying hi to all you. Okay, hold on a minute. I'm, I gotta go look at something. So sorry. 
Yeah, so I'm going to show this to you guys. I, I just, I find this interesting. So I just got through reacting to her latest live. Okay. And she said she was in Thailand. And then she and Salah moved over to Pattaya. One moment. I, I, I'm just curious about something. Distance from Thailand to Pattaya. Okay, so she and Salah were saying that they were based in Thailand. But then they moved over to Pattaya City. That's a five hour, 10 minute drive away. Right? Because I'm looking it up now. Because I just want to make sure I get my facts straight. So they were in Thailand and she said, well, we just want to travel to a different place. So we went to Pattaya and that's five hours, 10 minutes away. But Unless they're saying, staying at the same hotel chain with the same room layout. Do y'all see what I see? Same background. Looks like the same room. So are you guys still in Thailand and you're just lying to everybody claiming that you're in a different place when you're not? Because look, she's doing the live. Same background here and here. So why are you lying to people, Chantal? Why are you lying to people? What's up? Just for context, let me show it again. So she claimed here to be in Thailand. Now she's claiming it's to be in Pattaya. Same background up with that anyway let's go back to the live and let's cover that i just i just was like really i thought you traveled anywho let's go you guys. <laughs> love the vlog are you guys liking them thank you thank you yeah um I'm a bit behind on editing. Admittedly, we ha I still have a lot of editing to do but there will be a video up on our couples channel very shortly um so yeah i went missing for three weeks i needed a new smartphone oh well glad to have you back vanessa <laughs> how are you going girl hi just having some water i might get a different drink there's this drink here i've been having but it's a little warm it's called didu <laughs> cantaloupe cantaloupe it tastes like cantaloupe but it's really sweet I find a lot of things have sugar here, like even the sauces. And I'm sure you love that because you do have a sweet tooth. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, did you guys switch hold on? No, we didn't. <laughs> Hi, Golden Girl. Chicken Bunny, that's so great. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Welcome, Salam, goes face. Just got back from the dentist. Oh, that's always fun. Did you get a root canal? Hope not. Those are the worst. <sighs> uh, what time is it here in Thailand? What time is it, babe? Does it say? That's uh, 11 uh, p.m. 11 08 p.m. So it's like 11 a.m. where you guys are, huh? Yeah. Hello, little mush mush. <laughs> Always change your name. I love it. Hi, Mush Mush. Hi. <laughs> so yeah, we're like, um, yeah, it's like I said before, it's like huge, huge time gap. Huge time gap. Are you enjoying your trip, babe? The trip? So, 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 so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so, so fun. Like, honestly, like, it's just Amazing. You guys will see. Like, I feel like I can't say much because, you know, I don't want to spoil the fun of the videos. We are having a lovely vacation. Yeah. Like, for you guys just watching it on video is different. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't get the vibe from either one of them that they're having that much fun. 
I don't see how it could be fun for Chantal when she's so sensitive to the heat and she doesn't like to move. I don't see how it could be fun for her. And I don't see how it could be fun for Salah either. I mean, he could be having more fun if she weren't there. But the fact that she is changes everything. Anybody that's ever traveled or gone somewhere with somebody they did not like or was a complete drag, then you know what I'm talking about. Even if you go somewhere fun, if you have somebody who is not fun, it can cause you to not have fun. So like it, it, it ruins the experience. So since she's there and she's sensitive to heat and she has to be fed every hour, every two hours, and there's so many restrictions. Oh, wherever we're going, there has to be air conditioning. There has to be food made available. I have to eat. It has to be cool in temperature. We can only be go out at night. Or we can only go to places where there's practically deserted. The restrictions that come with her. How could you go and explore? How could you go and have fun? Oh, and let's not forget that she's an insecure, jealous woman. And if you're the man in her eye, like you can't look at other women. You can't talk to other women. You can't socialize with people. And since she's socially awkward, she's not going to talk to anybody. She's not going to be that one that she makes friends or talks to local people. Like her focus is entirely on you. So since she is all about keeping to herself, then you have to be also about keeping to yourself. You can't make friends with no one, especially other women. So how could you have fun with someone like Chantal? Different. Like, like when I was watching vlogs before coming here, I was like, wow, like this is going to be, you know, it's going to be cool. But then when you get here, it's like the whole vibe. You have to experience it. Jenna, how much for a cameo? Um, I think it's like, how much is it for a cameo? Like 20 you don't know. You set up the account. You don't know how much cameos are. 25 bucks. I forget. Something like that, Jenna. <laughs> Sorry. Do you remember, baby? Exactly. Yeah. Um, you had a root canal done and you slept through it. Oh, so you probably didn't feel much pain till after, huh? <clears throat> I don't know how I have so much energy. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know either. Honestly, like walking for me now, honestly, it's like, it's not like a breeze, a breeze, but it's pretty just like, nor I feel like normal, like walking around. Like we walk for hours. So I think it's what broke me. I, doubt, I doubt that. I doubted they walk for hours. If you walk for hours, why aren't the vlogs longer? Why are the why are they the basic bare minimum? Like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. We don't get an hour vlog out of Chantal or a two-hour vlog. If they walk for hours, they should have hours and hours and hours of footage. So unless they're she did take hours of footage and she's just being stingy and doling it out in several videos, she's not walking for hours. She's not. I, I, I can't see her doing that. I can't see her going from a place where she has been very sedentary for months and months and months. And then going from that to walking for hours and hours on end. Because her back already hurts. Like when she walks, she holds on to her lower back. Because all, of all the weight in front puts a strain on her lower back. So I can't imagine her walking for hours without being in excruciating pain. Bien, is that long travel day. Was so, so much activity for me. And like, I don't know. It was really, really stressful. But it was like. But you know what? The big test, y'all, is when she leaves Thailand and she goes back to Kuwait. If she's allowed to go back there. Is she going to keep up the activity level? I don't think so. I think she's going to go back to Kuwait, go back to the house, and stay there and not want to leave. She's going to get real comfortable in the air conditioning and with the Uber Eats. And she's probably going to eat more than she's ever eaten. 
She's going to say, I deserve this. I traveled. I did the travel bees thing. So I am going to reward myself for the next 30 days with food. Almost a good stress because I had Salah with me. So I wasn't, you know, oops, sorry. Okay. The Mac Wax Museum was so fun. <laughs> That's a steal. <laughs> That's not bad. Some people charge like 200 bucks. He's always wanted to go somewhere famous. Who's that? Oh, 25 USD. Hi, just dandy. I'm an inspiration. Really? Thank you. Well, that's a bonus. I just want to like show you guys like, yeah, share my life with you. I've always wanted to travel. I've always wanted to, but I always felt like just held back by, by money, like in my past, um, like before being a YouTuber or like um, my weight, health problems, but you can adjust your your travel to your needs. It's very, it's not as hard as you think, you know? You know what, Chantal? You're making less money than you did when you were with Natter. So it wasn't money that was holding you back. You had plenty. You have more back in the day than you do now. You've always had money to travel. It's just that you never wanted to do it. You're happy thinking about it. You're happy dreaming about it. But you don't want to do it because traveling involves, you know, preparing and going places and doing things and talking to people. And these are all things you really don't want to do. Be honest with yourself. Your fixation is on food. And you don't want to be bothered with anything else but that. You want to be able to sit down and have the food delivered to you. You don't even want to be bothered with going to go get it. You want it brought to you. So saying that money was an issue, it was never an issue. During the whole Natter arc, you could have traveled just fine on the money you were making. But you were busy spending it on food and party favors and him. But you said you were held back because of your weight. Well, the weight is still an issue. And it's worse than it's ever been. But what are you doing about it? Are you scaling back on the food? Are you trying to stop yourself from eating every two hours? No. You're still hyper fixated on the food. The problems are still problems. Because you haven't dealt with any of them. But I have noticed that you are incredibly food motivated. If food is in the picture, you'll be motivated enough to go do something. I'm going to do some talking point videos like that. Maybe that can help people who need like a push, you know? You know, it's almost like the carrot on the stick thing with a donkey or a mule. You know, the visual that I'm getting with Chantal, like, like she is the donkey. And if you want her to do something, if you want her to go somewhere, you have to put food on a stick and hold it in front of her and she'll start walking. If there's no food on the stick, she won't go. Hey, Gore, you're in Thailand. Cool beans. Yes, Cassie. You guys are having so much fun. Thank you, Teardrop. The Wax Museum was so fun. The weather here mm -hmm. is really nice. It's really ideal. It can be hot during the day, but not unbearable like like um, Kuwait. Like Kuwait, I can't even go out there. But um, in the summer, here it's like 30, the hottest usually. It's good to see me out and about. I know it's good. <laughs> it feels good. 11, 11. So nice. <laughs> so I'm liking the food. You like the food? Um, mostly, yeah. Yeah. It depends on the food. Yeah, yeah, Golden Girl. I mean, I'm just like, mashallah, I'm so happy that, you know, I have the opportunity to travel. I, it makes me want to travel more. It makes me want to experience more different cultures and... Um, even explored more places in Asia. Like I would, I'm kind of interested in going to like, you know, Thai, um, Singapore, Malaysia, um, Indonesia, China, Japan, Vietnam. I'd love to go to Vietnam. We want to travel to different places, you know. So, um, they, yeah. Oh, you know, the funny thing is. If Chantal feels self-aware and self-conscious in Thailand, can you imagine her in a place like Japan? Oh, my God. 
Woo. Chantal in Japan. I don't know if that would be good content or bad, but it would definitely be an eye opener and be an experience for her because Japan, they're all about beauty and aesthetics. So imagine this foul, rude, vulgar, disrespectful creature in Japan. And the Japanese people are all about manners. They're all about etiquette. They're all about arriving on time and not being offensive. This walking trash bag in a place like Japan. Imagine how people would look at her and how people would treat her. How people would stare at her. Yeah, go to Japan, Chantal. F around and find out. Creepy comfort, hello. Hi. Hi, Dandy, thank you. So this is smoky season. I'm not sure corn chowder. I look less bloated. <laughs> Might be this hijab, I don't know. But yeah, no, I definitely feel like a little bit. I, my, my fitness has definitely improved. Turkey, yes. Vietnam is so beautiful. Yeah. And the food. Yeah. I can imagine. I love all food. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Speaking of which, I want to snack. I'm having these Primo Choco Plus cookies. I don't know what they are. Gas station snacks delivery. <laughs> it's true. So she is using the Uber Eats over in Thailand. So she's got backup sandwiches and backup gas station snacks. So whenever she gets online from her room and says, I'm starving, we got to go to breakfast. Understand she's probably eaten her snacks before she goes to breakfast. Yeah, it's really, 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 really. They have food in the room already. The snacks here are so, 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 so different. Wait. I'll show you. It's like a chocolate cookie. Supposed to have caramel in it. You want to go to Canada? I want to travel around Canada someday. What stopped you before? Mike. Hi, Mike. I'm glad you guys are enjoying the live shrimp. It was pretty, uh, pretty interesting. I mean, it wasn't, didn't taste gross at all. I'm back to Canada. Yeah, we should collab. <laughs> Something creepy. Oh, by the way, Salah finally got me this. You guys were talking about it for a while. So he saw one. He was like, we should get this. I'm like, yeah. A mini fan. It works pretty well, and it's charged by USB. You probably got you that little mini fan because you got tired of you complaining about how hot you were. And maybe he's also gotten sick of the limitations of being with you when you go somewhere that you have to have air conditioning, you have to have cool air on your face. So he just bought you that little mini fan so you guys can go out and do these vlogs. And it has a light. Pretty cool, eh? Hi, Salah. Hope you are okay, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just li I'm just trying to like you know live out my dreams, live out what I want to do. You know, not not concerning myself with anything, but trying to improve my life. You know. And honestly, like this trip so far has been good as in like, at least it's been raising my stamina for walking. Like I, we do, we do a lot of walking. You guys will see in the videos, but I would like to do maybe at least once, maybe some kind of live walking down a street, like a, a local street and just trying street food. That would be so good. Trying more street food. Um, 
Yeah, exactly. Cricket. How long are we staying in Thailand? I'm not going to disclose. Well, we're not going to disclose like exactly how long, but um, yeah, <laughs> you guys will see. <laughs> I'm buying a chicken for chicken Alfredo with spinach. I'm sorry, Sophia. Like I'm just, you know, we just like to keep things private because literally there are people who will like try to pinpoint exactly um, what airport we're at and all that kind of stuff. So we have to be really careful. You know, that's like our responsibility. So that's why I don't, I don't say. <laughs> like, Chantal, what do you think is going to happen? Honestly, what do you think is going to happen if people found out when you're leaving? Do you think the entire reaction community that we're going to contact the airport and have you swatted or something on the airplane? We're not that invested. We're just here to react to the content that you post. Do you think paparazzi is going to show up at the airport to take your picture and post it on Reddit or something? You're in Thailand. Okay, we're over here in the United States or maybe even in Canada. We're not that invested. It's ridiculous how you walk around thinking you're some kind of actual celebrity. You're not a celebrity. No one off of YouTube knows your name. And even the people that are on YouTube, nobody cares. You can say when you're leaving. You can say, oh, we might be leaving in a week or two weeks and still keep it vague enough to where we don't know the exact date. But you act like you're some kind of celebrity. It's stupid. This is the way, Chantel. Thanks, Monica. Hey, what's up, Rhonda? I really want to try a Dorian, but a bit scared of the smell. Oh, you have a, if you have a bad gag reflex, especially for smells, it will make you gag. It was starting to nauseate me, but I had to carry it around, walking around in the humid weather in my backpack. Like, that was stupid. Thanks, Sandy. Yeah. Gemini Gem says, yeah, they've already figured out your hotel. Talking about uh, different channels. You know why we figured out her hotel? Because she doxed herself. This big idiot sandwich with cheese attached to it, she doxxed herself. She showed the view out the window. And she's been through this before. She's gone to hotels and motels and had them doxxed. So you would think she would have learned her lesson from all of that. Apparently, she hasn't. She showed the view out the window, and yeah, people figured out where she was at. But she did that. She showed entirely too much. And then people started to leave reviews for the hotel and the motel, which I will state again, not cool, y'all. Not cool for the people who did that. I know you hate Chantal. She's a despicable person. But please think of the people who work at that hotel, the staff that depend on that place for their living, for their paychecks to feed themselves and feed their families. You're affecting them more so than Chantal. But nobody would have known where she was at had she not doxxed herself. She did that on purpose. You know, she threw that out there and people just responded. Street vendor videos, I know, showing them cooking the food. Yeah, I know. Even on the streets, exactly, babe. Like, even if you just go out and walk on the streets, there's so many things. Like, if you're not used to the culture, you're not used to the people, you're not used to the vibe, it's it's so exciting, you know? You know, a little interesting tidbit. So I sat up and watched a live feed of Thailand or a video, somebody walking through Thailand the streets are really narrow <laughs> at night with the nightlife and people walking around. Chantal could never, she would never being in tight spaces, walking amongst people at night. She could never do that. <clears throat> mm. Yeah. I can't do smells. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like if you have a don't have a strong stomach, Dorian, 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 
the picture of durian gray. <laughs> no, but durian is so delicious. I don't know. It tastes like the taste and smell don't match. They don't. Yeah, it's like tastes like vanilla custard. Yeah, it does. It does. It really does. Like it's it's soft. I don't know how to explain it. Night markets? Yeah, of course. Yeah, for sure. Do you worry about pickpocketers? Um, I did think about it, Kitty Girl. Like I was like, I'm on, you know, we are kind of like, we're very careful when we're out of that kind of thing. You got to be careful. The people over there look so friendly. Yeah, like, you know, mashallah, we've only encountered so far really nice people, but and Durian yeah. Gray. That was interesting. I just caught that. So when she said the people are here are really friendly, she looked down. Like something happened. Did something happen, Chantal? Did somebody say something to you? Or are you thinking about people staring at you because just because it's that, that momentary half second looking down, like just frown on your face? I'm sure that people in Thailand are very friendly. That's a land of smiles. But did something happen to cause you to act like that? Yeah, if you gag easily, I would watch out for that for sure. Because, you know, but I don't know if you can even buy it in the West. I haven't seen it anywhere I've been, you know, like even international grocery areas. Watch your backpacks. Yeah. Um, I, I took my Shahada, like I can, I reverted kindness, like. What? I reverted ki kinda? Wow. So you reverted kind of. You kind of reverted. What does that mean to revert kinda? Versus all the way converted. You know what? At this point, it doesn't matter. Because she's never had the faith in her heart. I mean, after she took her Shahada, we saw what happened. Coming on camera, cursing, using the profanity, being gross, gluttony, raging. So it makes sense that she says she reverted kind of. Because what that tells me is that she she's fake, she's phony, this is cosplaying. In my opinion, she is using and has been using the Muslim faith as a sort of shield for her awful behavior to escape her awful behavior. But it's not something she's fully committed to. It's been uh, what, maybe six or seven months now, I think. Maybe longer. It's almost midnight here, Mike. <laughs> I won't be on too long because we do have a long day tomorrow planned as well. Pretty much have something planned every day. There's like here and there we take a small break, like a you know, maybe half a day of not going out. Nah, 12 months loyalty beezer. Wow. Thanks for being a loyal beezer for the whole year. Say hi, Grandpa Bill, for me. Ready, shall we be? <laughs> you would feel safe there. Seen it in Portugal. Ah, oh, really, Mike? Nah, beezer. <laughs> You're cute. You always wash. Thank you. I appreciate that. Don't talk Thai. What do you mean? Yeah, we don't talk Thai. We only know like we only know like sawadika, sawadika, and uh, how do you say sort of thank you kapkunka, kapkunka? Yeah. They say ka at the end of everything. Like uh, yeah. here is your order ka, like that kind of thing. I don't know. I think it means like. All right, or something like that. You're an idiot. You have your phone. You can't look it up. I looked it up. It's they're when they're speaking to you, that that's the reference to if you're a female. It's a different reference when you're a male. They're, you know, they're, they're giving you the, the female version of good morning or they're greeting you you're in thailand and you can't look up simple greetings chantal figure out what they are some world traveler you are have y'all had anything else um 
No, we haven't had anything sketchy other than people trying to get you to pay a lot more. Like if they know you're a tourist, especially for transportation, you have to be careful because they will try to get extra money off of you. Like you have to know generally, like do your research before you come here. Like I'm going to do a tips video if you want to travel here. But so she did not do any kind of research on how to say proper greetings to people, what they mean, the manners, the etiquette. But she made sure to research that part. Like I I'm I'm going to Thailand. And although I could do research on the manners and etiquette and know how to behave properly to where I don't disrespect anyone, not going to do any research on that. No, no. No, I'm going to research on making sure that nobody rips me off because that's important. It's more important to research nobody ripping me off, but it's not important enough to research just manners and etiquette and proper greetings. You have to be careful negotiating prices for transportation because they will try to get a lot of money out of you. So you have to know the average of what it would cost to travel around. Yeah, maybe like Canadians say, hey, exactly, Rhonda. Yeah, Nekutere for sure. Yeah, we'll have videos for that coming up. So is everything cheaper in Thailand? Honestly, some things, yes. If you will really, really look for budget things, maybe, like especially rent and stuff like that. If you look to live here, I heard it's cheaper. But as a tourist, I wouldn't say that it's really cheap. Like, you know, it's tourist things to do can be very pricey. They can be money drops. So I would like, I don't know, I want to experience like authentic culture like Thai culture and stuff but a lot of places that are touristy like museums and stuff but when I saw Madame Tussauds I was like I don't care if it's authentic Thai or not I need to go I need to go to that because I haven't been to a wax museum especially Madame Tussauds I love them I used to go all the time every time we would go to Niagara Falls but I'm like I need to go to this museum and check it out I, I have so much fun doing those things can wait for future vlogs. Thank you. You're traveling to Las Vegas on American Thanksgiving week. <gasps> Thanksgiving. New Orleans or Boston. Yeah, those would be cool places to go. I hope you get to travel there. I had a job interview at a new hair salon in my town. <gasps> Nuts! That's so awesome. Congratulations. Mabruk, mabruk. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. Getting the job you want it feels like you won the lottery, I swear. When I was at my old place and I was just done, I was done with that place. I was looking every chance I could get for a new job. And when I got it, I was like, oh, you feel like your life is going to change, you know, and it does. Chantal's job history before YouTube was horrible. Like she talked about a few jobs that she had. <laughs> And every single one she got fired. She got fired for not showing up at her job. She got fired for like eating at her desk. Like she just, she wasn't committed to working. That's why YouTube is a perfect fit for Chantal. Because she would never be able to commit to a regular job. The hours and the scheduling and, and doing actual work. On YouTube, she can just make her own work schedule. Like it's effortless for her. She could just... Film a bunch of footage, post it when she wants, doesn't have to report to a boss. She can be her own boss. She got lucky by wandering onto YouTube. I mean, where would she be without her YouTube channel? Honestly, she's not employable. She doesn't know how to talk to people. She can't be on her feet for long. If her YouTube channel tanked, she'd be in big trouble. Ask the locals. Yeah, that's a good idea. Chicken bunny. I've always wanted to go to England. Really? Yeah, that would be, I would go to England. I want to see everything. I don't know. It's a big world and it's so different, you know? I don't know. You learn a lot about the world traveling. That's for sure. The only way to experience life is to experience it, in my opinion. So I'm imagine how much more of the world you would see. And you would experience if you got your focus off of food. If you put more in your eyesight than the nearest restaurant or buffet or fast food restaurant, 
how much more of the world you would actually see. Your, your focus is on one thing. And you have to make sure that one thing is always close by. But imagine what else out there is, Chantal. Like the, the world is wide. The world is big. But as long as you're fixated on that one thing, you're putting yourself on that toxic hamster wheel. You're never going to be able to get off, ever. I'm not going to let myself be held back, you know, by anything. When I drop dead, I drop dead. But that, until then, I'm going to do everything I can to live my life from now on. Hi, born villain! Arabic go face. <laughs> See, Chicken Bunny's got the right way of thinking. Chicken Bunny says, when I go to a new country, I always ask the locals where they like to hang out. I've said that in a few reacts that I've done. By her not being a social person and now and allowing herself to socialize and talk to people, she's missing out on a lot. Because when you go to a new place, if you go out, you socialize with people, you talk to people that live there, they'll point you in the direction of all the cool stuff that a lot of tourists don't know and would never know. Hey, wh wh where's a good place to go shopping? Where's a good place to get food? Where's a great restaurant? And they'll point you in that direction. But they're not going to tell you if you don't talk to them. So by staying in a hotel room and eating gas station snacks and doing Uber Eats and scrolling around on TikTok, You'll never know what those places are, foodie. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> I really want to visit China and ride their trains. Yeah, that would be, I don't know. They have a lot of trains there? You said, uh, uh, me neither. Uh, don't feel safe when I'm far away from my uh, main country. Main mm. town. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see what you mean. Sometimes if I really think of it, I get home, like not homesick, but like a little afraid. Like I'm in another country. If you really think of the what ifs, you get freaked out. Are you guys going to check out the beaches? Yeah, of course. No, they're not. No, they're not. <laughs> they are not going to check out the beaches. Never. Chantal letting Salah on a beach. Where there are scantily clad women for him to ogle at? You think that's really going to happen? You think that she's going to let that happen? She's not going to go out in the daytime. She's not going to let him go to the beach and just take a walk by himself. With all those beautiful ladies there in their swimsuits. Uh-uh. I mean, we saw it. They were in Kuwait. They were right next to a beach. Did they ever really visit there anytime other than late at night? No. So why are they going to go to a daytime beach in Thailand where there are very, very pretty ladies? She's too insecure and jealous for that. Maybe not like so, so much as some other people because we don't, that's not like the focus of, I don't really, I mean, we have a lot of beaches in Kuwait and I do like the beach, but I'm no, not like huge on swimming and stuff like aqua life. So hi, Master Shredder. Yeah, whatever happened to the idea of getting a burkini and going swimming? You were claiming that women in Kuwait could not swim that much. But you're in Thailand. So what's stopping you in Thailand from going to a beach? Other than yourself and the fact that you just couldn't deal with Salah looking at other women. Nice, Cassie. Yeah, I want to visit, like, yeah, the tunnels. They're creepy. Miss World Traveler. Deutschland. I, I love, I don't know. Yeah. It's a really getting to be like something I really enjoy doing. A female, you say ka. And if you're a male, you say crub. Right. Please and thank you. Oh. And again, the, she would know that if she just looked up Google Translate. If she looked at how to do proper greetings, she'd know this stuff. Interesting, Gemini. Thank you for that lesson. How are you managing the walking? I know you were struggling in Kuwait. I know. I don't know. I think like it's the heat probably, I guess, was one of the major factors. Like I'm 
I'm large, but I'm also very asthmatic, right? And um Oh, please stop it. Please stop. Yes, you're right. You are a very large woman, but you claim to be asthmatic, but yet you sit there and smoke you were sitting there smoking weed all day in Canada before Salah came along. And at, during the Natter arc, when you were saying, oh, I've got asthma, I've got allergies, blah, blah, blah. At the same time that you were doing the magic white powder. I got so sick of hearing you say that, that I went back to your channel, Chantal. And I found clips of you where you were walking in a field of flowers. No allergy reaction whatsoever. And then I went further back to when you were with Bibi. You were in the house. No reaction. And then another one, when you were walking in the middle of, it looked like a, like a foresty area beside a road, and there were all kinds of allergy-inducing plants nearby. No reaction. So it seems like your asthma and allergies, they come and go when they suit you. They're not real allergies, are there? Do you smoke cigarettes? You've taken walks with no reaction whatsoever, but you, I'm, I'm asthmatic. No, you're not. No, you're not. That's like DNA. That's like a DNA thing for me because my family, my mom, my sister have it bad. And so I guess the heat, okay. The heat here is like 30. Okay. In Kuwait, it's like, feels like 55 sometimes, most days in the summer. So that's, that's 25 degrees extra that I'm walking, trying to walk around and it's just suffocating. I can't explain it. Am I supposed to feel sorry for you because you made the choice to make yourself unhealthy and get to a place where you are super, super morbidly obese. And as a result, you retain heat and you're hotter than what you normally would be. And you made the choice to go to a desert climate, Kuwait, and then go to a tropical climate like Thailand and you're experiencing periods where you feel overly hot. Am I supposed to feel sorry for you? Because I don't, because these are all choices that you're making. These are all choices that you've made. You chose to let yourself get to a place where you are super, super morbidly obese. You chose to do content on YouTube that focuses around you eating massive amounts of food. And you've gotten to a huge body mass to where now you're having trouble finding clothes to fit you. You're having trouble uh, walking and being mobile. You have trouble with your breathing. All because of choices that you've made, foodie. So coming on camera, coming on this live and complaining about this, that, and the other thing, I'm not hearing you. I'm not crying tears for you, and, and neither should anybody else. You know, you are a victim of your own choices. You're causing your own hurt and you continue to do so. So it's a lot more comfortable here to walk. Um, I think, I don't know. I don't know what it is, really. I don't, I never thought I'd be able to walk like this. To leave my state so traveling for me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, there's nothing wrong with being a homebody either. Hi, Rashu. Welcome, Salam. Thanks for going. Yeah, I'm okay. Hold on, I want to snack. Do you want something, honey, while I'm up? No, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So Thriller Kid says, have you lost any weight on vacation? I can I can answer that for you because I know Chantal won't. The answer is no. First of all, she's not been on vacation that long. It's not like she's been gone for a month that if she were going to lose any weight, it would show up by now. Secondly, I mean, look at her behavior in this live. You know, it, this live only went on for an hour and 18 minutes and she had one snack in the beginning and she's having another one. So given from what I'm seeing right here, and she's constantly eating. She's eating the junk food still. So how could she lose weight by doing that? Even if she is walking, uh, walking is good. Walking is very good for 
for stamina, building it up, and also for burning a few calories. But whatever calories she might be burning with the walking, she's eating it. She's eating those calories right back. So how can she lose weight doing that crap? Oh, and it looks like she's also not getting any sleep. I mean, the baggy eyes. Clearly, you know, she's not rested. People don't have bottle openers. Hi, Roma. Thanks, guys. If you are male, you end sentences with the word cup, cup. If similarly, if you are female, you end your sentences with the word ca, cup. Oh, okay, thank you. See, I need to learn all these things. Yogurt looks good. Yeah, I've been craving like something somewhat sort of healthy. No, you're not. Hmm. I'll be having a great time. For sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Your home yeah, <laughs> the answer from your home kamala is so long. It's like a whole process. <laughs> Say it again. I said Alhamdulillah that uh, thanks God that you kept me alive. Mm. Because when you sneeze, you die uh, less than a second. Then then you answer me. And here's proof that she's got feedies in the chat. This person, Thriller Kid, says, uh, Salah Gaming, please feed your wife as an act of love. Confirmation, there are feedies in the chat. Even though she's over 500 pounds and she doesn't need to eat more food, people in chat saying, go ahead and feed her. Why does she need to eat more food? Let me tell you something. All of you feeding people that are in Chantal's chat, if that is your fetish, if that is your thing, why don't you feed yourselves versus watching somebody else eat? You selfish fucks. Why don't you feed yourselves versus and urging somebody who's already unhealthy to become more unhealthy just to satisfy your fetish. Now, I'm an open-minded person. And, you know, everybody's thing is whatever their thing is. But there's a few fetishes I got a problem with, especially fetishes that involve self-harm or somebody else being harmed. And in my mind, the feedy fetish, it's under that self-harm category. Somebody is hurting their body for your sake to satisfy your interests. So all of you feedy fucks out there, if that is your thing, if food is your thing, feed yourselves, not somebody else. Don't encourage somebody else to hurt their body for you. She's 500 pounds. She's got all of these health problems. She's having trouble breathing. She's having trouble walking. We saw her at the cafe where when she sat down, she had have her legs completely splayed out in front of her because she couldn't sit normal. But despite all you feedy people seeing that shit, you're going to encourage her to eat. She doesn't need to eat more. She needs to eat less. She doesn't need encouragement. She already has a fixation on food. She doesn't need any help. So if you're a feedy person, feed your doggone selves. Don't encourage somebody who's got a problem with food to keep going with that. I mean, let's put the shoe on the other foot. If there was a person who had an addiction to alcohol or rugs, and you knew they had a problem with those things, would you walk up to them and encourage them to do that? No, then don't do it to her. Because food is her rug. And it's just as deadly and it's just as fatal as any other illicit rug. Okay? Okay, thank you. Off my soapbox now. Let's go. Oh, so I saved you. Did I say uh, it's like, uh, I hope God will uh, bless you also. Ah. <sighs> Okay. I didn't know that, babe. 
Matreya. <laughs> Congratulations. Mm. So yeah. Sorry, I'm always eating. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe if I didn't eat so much, I'd lose more weight, but. <laughs> you haven't lost any weight. And how I know this, Chantal, is that if you lost weight, you'd be very quick to jump on it and rub it in our faces. You would jump on that scale, show us the number, flip us the bird and go, see reaction channels. Where's your weigh-ins? You would do that. But the fact that you haven't gotten on a scale and done that tells me everything I need to know. You're not losing weight. You're gaining weight. And you know that. Let's give them something to talk about. Life ain't no mystery to figure out. <laughs> Is that the one? Or... Yes, I love my visas. I have to admit. Of course you do. You love your enablers. They keep your habits going. We had some good times together. <laughs> right? <laughs> let me, let me like, you know, like do a co-edit on that. Let me just correct myself with that. There are some Beezers that are not into the food content. There are some Beezers that actually care about Chantal. And they want her to get healthy. And they want her to eat healthy. And for those people, I say, you have good intentions. You have very good intentions. Here's the problem. You care more about Chantal than she cares about herself. And understand that she doesn't care about all of you. She cares the most about people who enable her habits. That encourage her bad habits and don't oppose them. Yeah, I'm talking about the feedy people, that 25% of her audience, that all they're there for is to see her eat food and consume food in massive amounts. So the 75% of you that care about Chantal and want her to be around for a long time and do travel vlogs, she's okay with you being there as long as you give her a view, maybe a super chat. But the people that she's the most interested in are the feedy people. Because those are the people that give the biggest super chats. Those are the ones that might be paying her for custom content off YouTube and throwing her some extra money. She's still trying to attract those people to her audience. If she wasn't interested in those people, she would say, hey, I'm going to do what I want to do. And my content is not going to be about food. And if you don't like that, go suck an egg. But every video that she does, every live that she does, she's got to be eating on camera because that's what makes them happy. Exactly. <laughs> oh, it's gone. They do have fish pedicures. Imagine the fish were eating my feet and they got fat. Verano, 22 months. Beezer, loyalty Beezer. I'm using my milestone just to see that face you made for teardrops ready set rebees. Well, Rhonda, you're in luck because guess what? Ready set rebees. <laughs> Thanks, Melissa. From Illinois. Emily, thank you. I was eating a yogurt with Soska. They give you a little spoon here. How fancy. <laughs> this is a small spoon. You know, my grandmother used to collect spoons, like these little spoons that you can't eat. They're useless. They're just decoration. I mean, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Do you collect spoons or do you have a, a relative who collects those like different decorative spoons? This is why we love you. <laughs> Definitely. But do they eat your feet? Like, does it feel weird? Ew. I, I don't want to kick them and be mean. I could just hear someone now. She kicked a fish. How cruel. 
Monica, loyalty bees are 20. Does that say 26? Oh my gosh. We will keep having fun with our Beezer king and queen. Shukran Habib T. Thank you, Monica. Um, really? You guys should do seafood boil. So was, seafood's not his favorite, but he might like it. I would. I would devour a king crab right now. <laughs> well, seafood, yeah, like fish, but all. But do you like crabs and lobster? No. That's like, yeah, that kind of seafood. No, fish and maybe shrimp. Okay. You could eat the shrimps and the corn and the sausage. And the, or the uh, crab. You don't like crabs, eh? You said? I don't think seafood boils. Does seafood boils come with potatoes, corn, sausage, shrimp, crab, and what else? I don't know. The live shrimp we're trying to get away. Yeah, I mean, I feel bad, but when you really think about it, they're they're gonna die. Like they're you know like people boil lobster alive. You know, people. I don't know. Like who do they even have a brain? They're like this big. They're like small little shrimp. They're see-through. I don't know. They're a food source. I mean, people are okay with cow slaughtering, but, not, you know, I don't know. <laughs> the first time I ate, yeah, I ate, I ate almost most of it. Yeah, I would say. It started giving me ick, though. Bite her crazy food to try. Thank you, teardrop. Thanks for that. <laughs> okay, I will for sure in your honor. <laughs> Of course, that would change your mind. Somebody throws her five bucks. Create, buy another crazy food. Again, food. she's food motivated and she's money motivated. You throw some money at her, she'll do anything. <laughs> he didn't like the pad thai? Because that noodles was taste weird. It's, I think too much sweet with some sauce. I don't know yeah. from where they bring it. I don't know. One. Yeah, I don't think you like this the combination of the sweets. He doesn't like sweet savory thing mix that much. And the texture of the noodles, they were like kind of flat and broader, like you know, and they were a bit gummy. Like, you know how rice noodles are gummy? I don't think he's ever tried rice noodle. Yeah, <laughs> Nekutair, they are, yeah, for sure. And very smart creatures. Yeah, you can eat a scorpion. No, I can't. Okay. Uh, also, there's Jackie Chan and uh, Jim Carrey. Mm. I liked Nicole Kidman. I don't even know if we showed her on camera. Okay, she's getting boring. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead. They're talking about food. I'm bored with the food talk. Are you guys bored? I'm falling asleep. I'm bored. I'm over here snoring. I think uh, Nicholas Cage. <laughs> Bird. Yeah. 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 Everybody. Nope, they're singing. I, because that's like, that's what I'm really trying to do in my life. No matter what situation I get put on, no matter how bad it is, I'm always going to try to find a way to get out of it and look on the positive side of things. You know, like that. Wait, 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 wait. That first part of the statement was true. Like whatever bad thing comes late, she'll find a way to get out of it. She should have stopped there. That would have been a completely true statement because Chantal puts herself in tight corners and then she finds a way to pivot out of that corner just enough to where she can move. Chantal, you're not understanding. The more you say, the more you do, the, the tighter of a corner you put yourself into. And you have reached that place where you can barely move right now. And I'm not talking about physically. I'm just talking about in every way. You just, you can't move. But you, you're you not learning. You're not, you're not learning the lesson of controlling your mouth. You're not understanding the lesson of, you know, maybe, maybe I shouldn't work so hard to offend people and tick people off. Because if I don't pick people off, I have a bigger corner to move around in. The more you say and the more you do, the more it comes back to you, the tighter of a corner you put yourself in and the less ability you have to pivot out of it. That's that's how I deal. Have my sparkle back, thank you. Yeah, she just needs to learn the lesson that she is not as smart as she thinks she is. And she's not as clever 
as she thinks she is. And she just can't escape every situation by lying and manipulating. Eventually, all chickens come home to roost. All of them. 40 plus, weird for September. That is weird, creepy. Yeah. She thinks. Yeah, you have to. You have to overcome them for sure. Hi, Lolo. Hey, I missed you. Yeah. We were meant for each other. Aw. <laughs> I know. Okay, this person, Ghost Face Gamer. Dude, you're already on my last nerve. So Ghost Face Gamer says, Oh my goodness. Why won't hate channels mind their own business and do their own content? It's sad. Sir, can we have a fucking talk over here? Can I have a word with you? Let me tell you something, gamer. The reaction channels were probably around longer than you. I don't know exactly when you got into the whole Chantal universe, but some of us have been watching Chantal for the last five years. Okay? And back in the day, Chantal was perfectly fine with the reaction channels. Perfectly fine with us. She was okay with the reaction channels reacting to her because she understood the game. You know, like the reaction channels reacting to her, it spread her name all over YouTube. The fact that her channel is so big has less to do with her doing quality content, of which there is none, has more to do with the fact the reaction channels covered her for as long as we have. And by the way, Chantal, you're welcome for that. But she was fine with us until she wasn't fine. And she stopped being fine with us when her content started to change. And it started to get darker. So she went from a place of doing her content on her channel. And she was doing the food content. She was catering to the feedy people. All was fine. And then she brought Natter into the picture. And then all that darkness showed up. And talking about SA and DV and doing the rugs on camera and being inebriated. All that showed up. And then all the feedy people, they weren't around for that. They started disappearing. And then it got boring and monotonous. And a lot of people left. And also a lot of people left because she became abusive to her VIBs. Putting down people degrading people, humiliating people, posting stuff on her community post, posting stuff on her videos, calling people out by name, telling your own beezers. It doesn't matter if you leave. I'll get new people. None of you matter to me. Saying that over and over again. All of these things combined and more is what's caused a decline of her channel and her health. But she was fine with us for the longest time. And as far as doing our own content, sir, this person right here, she's so lacking in original thought and thought process that she literally goes on TikTok and spends hours on TikTok looking for content ideas because she can't come up with any on her own. And she will also, when it suits her, borrow other things from reaction channels like intro music, Chantal. What's up with that? What is up with you using my intro music? Twice. Twice, bitch. Twice. Why'd you do that? You got Kind Master. Look up your own music. But using ideas from other people? Because she came up, come up without any of her own. And we are minding our business. We're just reacting to her content. We're not interfering in her life. She can do as she pleases. We're not, I'm not up in her chat. You guys can see the chat right now. Do you see any reaction channels in her chat? None. She did a live. Nobody's in there bothering Chantal. So how are we not minding our business, gamer? Oh. I love cheesy romance. Why? I don't know, business, their own content. 
Yeah, everyone should travel the world. It's fun. <laughs> I mean, if you can, not everyone can. You know, right? Not everyone can. A lot of normal people have normal jobs. They have responsibilities. They have families. They have to go to work. They got to make their money. Not everybody has the freedom to go around the world and travel. And wherever they go, they can take their work with them. Chantal, you're in a position where you can do that. And you haven't fully utilized that, nor are you grateful for what you have. You don't look at your channel and say, I am blessed. I'm blessed because I can make money and I can work when I want. I can take a vacation when I want. I can dictate my own schedule. I make more in a month than most people see in three or four months. You're not grateful for all the blessings that you have. Not at all. You feel entitled to it. And not everyone, this is not everyone's idea of happiness. For some people, traveling would be a nightmare and they would never in a million years want to do it. You know, I know people who travel because they feel like they have to. Like, I know like some people in my life where it's like, you know, they don't love traveling, but they do it. Not everyone loves to travel like so much, you know? So, I mean, it's like, if you are a homebody, you have to define what your happiness is, what your way of living is, basically. <clears throat> Hi, I want to share both. The only reason why you're in Thailand is because you have to be in Thailand. Because you had to get out of Kuwait. Had that not been the case, you'd still be there doing mukbangs. Also, there's too many different things uh, about the cultures, food, uh, yeah. too many things, even the, the language, maybe it would be a uh, difficulty for you to yeah. you travel outside your town. Yeah, you know? travel, even if you have like, you know, a modest income, you can still travel, you just have to, there's traveling at every budget, basically, you know, you could spend thousands coming to Thailand and thousands and thousands. You could probably spend millions, you know, it just depends. There's, you know, hotels that are like $1,500 a night. There's hotels that are like uh, $150 a night. And there's hotels that are probably $15 a night. Like, it just depends on... Depends on the flight. Depends on the yeah. uh, dates, which, yeah, which dates you want to book, uh, book a flight to go. Yeah. And you have to know by her just saying what she just said, they get a very tight budget. Everything that Chantal does has to be grandiose, has to be large. So if she's got a lot of money, she's going to live large. She's going to live in grand style. But if they're staying at a motel or a hotel with like 15 bucks a night, 30 bucks a night, you best believe it's because they have to, not because they want to. You, have to, uh, you must be smart uh, of doing the budget before you travel. Exactly, exactly. By the way, Chantal, in the last react I did, you talked about going to Japan. Japan's pretty expensive. So good luck going there and trying to find a cheap place to stay. Yeah, you have to. You can't just go blind and like, oh, I'm just going to, you know. Since you're blind, other. Yeah, that's. See, Monica, like, exactly. Like, not everybody can, you know. Um, go through did that happen to you recently i'm sorry that happened to you that's scary but if you can't for medical reasons oh no oh no so ghost face gamer is a capricorn too i'm a cap as a cap we don't as a cap i don't claim you we capricorns we're taking away your capricorn card you can't have it back ghost gamer you're over there supporting Chantal. you can't sit with us Go away. Hey, as long as you know what I mean, like you can still make a really awesome life for yourself. Not everyone loves to travel. Not everyone can travel. I didn't think I would be able to. That's why I'm so excited. I'm like overcoming a lot of my fears on this journey. You know, a lot of things that I'm afraid of. You mean like people? You're afraid of people. Again, I'm, I'm not just taking note of what's going on in Thailand. But I'll be more interested to see the Chantal that comes back from Thailand. Like, is she going to go out and be more sociable with people? Is she going to show us more of Kuwait? Or is she going to revert back to her old habits? I'm betting on the latter. 
Yeah. Oh, thanks, Teardrop. Well, I'm glad I have you guys to watch too. You know, that's I I, I love doing that. I love showing things. Oh no. See, it ain't so. Teardrop is also a Capricorn. Oh, both of you are out of the club. You can't sit with us. Go away. I've been sharing things with you guys. So I do not like traveling. I focus on my work and stuff I care for. Yeah, everyone is different. Oh, are you a Capricorn, Teardrop? And also, <clears throat> there's too many broads uh, outside here to uh, touch it. <laughs> a lot of the green grass. <laughs> you love touching grass, huh, babe? <laughs> so much. Ah, okay, Monica. Did you have like really, really bad headaches like <laughs> leading up to it? Like, did you have any signs? <laughs> I always do what I say I'm going to do. Well, creepy. No, she doesn't. <laughs> Some things, I think I'm getting better at it. I, I wasn't. She doesn't. She doesn't do everything that she claims she will do. I can give you guys a brief list of things that she said she was going to do, but never did. Let's see. She said she was going to go to Jamaica. That never happened. She talked extensively about Eurobeezing. That never happened. Uh, what else? She talked about going to the weekend concert. That never happened. There's a lot of things she said she was going to do that she never did. Always like that. I would always just like, you know, I don't know. I think I, I drifted through life just like crap on a log for a long time, <laughs> you know? So, but yeah, I, I know what you mean. Like the only thing I, I really have trouble sticking to is like weight loss and stuff like that. You know, that's like the hardest thing ever. No, it's not. You just make it hard. You make it hard because you don't want to commit to changing yourself. You know what you need to do. I mean, there's tools, there's resources available. Where there's a will, there's a way. But you have to have the will for it first. You got to commit to it. In your case, Chantal, you've, you've got to reach that point where you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. You can't stake, take a step further and you say, I've got to change and you do it. But you've gotten way too comfortable in your toxic bubble with your beezers. The ones that support all this behavior and they fund it. You're way too comfortable. And sometimes being uncomfortable is what leads to change. Because when you get too uncomfortable, when things get too painful, that's when you change. When it's a have-to situation, that's when change happens. Certainly, that's true with you. You're a person that you're stubborn as a mule. You'll never do things because you want to. It's always because you have to and there is no other choice. Spend my days traveling. Iona, you definitely can. We carelessly threw them too. Nice, born villain. Hey, nothing wrong with that. You know? You two would be fun travel partners. Yes. Thank you. Sam Silk on YouTube can motivate you. Who's this? I had severe headaches for a few years. Oh, okay. Anyone's really unbearable. Not wishing on. Yeah, I bet. Monica. Well, I'm glad you're okay. I think you inspire uh, from 10 to 15. Exactly. Nope. Nope. I come on here and the only thing you're going to see is smiles or else I'm not going to come on at all. So, you know, unless it's like reasonable things, you know, but negativity that's petty or just not, not worth even a word over, not going to come out of my mouth anymore. Like life is too short. We have so much to do, <laughs> you know. Like everyone should just be happy and yeah, focus on themselves, their growth. There will always be fans and haters no matter what you do. Exactly. You know, exactly. <coughs> Creepy. <laughs> Handsome Miss Man. Handsome Miss Man. I wish I had more snacks. Oh my gosh, he's the handsomest man. I'm hyper. So. Hear the partying outside? 
Microcardia. <sighs> um, what was I gonna say? Uh -huh. You guys are the nicest. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Kiss. Yeah, me. I love it. <laughs> Hi, Estrella. Estrella? Remember I used to call you Estrella or something, I think? <laughs> so, what's up, guys? 48 minutes? Wow, that time passed fast. I have to, um, I'm too excited. I, I find that I'm having trouble just, like, going to bed, even though the beds in the hotels are so nice. Oh, my gosh. But I think... Um, Definitely going to have to go to bed soon because we have a full day. We have a full few days coming up. You know, I have to wonder if her just keeping the lives as short as she does, it has less to do with we've got so much to do tomorrow. We've got so many vlogs to film. It has more to do with uh, data plans and, and her SIM card. Because that was a concern of Chantal's like, like what's like as far as a data plan. So they're just keeping things as short as possible, you know, for the sake of saving money. Yeah. Yeah. So. Who said this? Who said this? Oh, <laughs> I didn't see somebody say salam alaikum. Uh, Sarah oh, hi, Sarah. Bees in this morning. <laughs> we can make bees. You know, Chantal, I mean, I haven't watched the rest of this live, but the feeling I'm getting from you is that you've run out of things to say. If you're doing a live and you've run out of things to say, that's when it's time to say, okay, guys, I'm out of here. Done. You don't just continue to ramble just to make the live longer so you can put ads on it. Ellen was selling. I know that one. <laughs> Happy Halloween. <laughs> that's what is Ellen Halloween. Yeah. Like uh, Hello Cutie or sort of like Hello. And Salah, if you want to be part of the live, bro, just sit next to Chantal and be part of the live, but you're talking across the room and it's so annoying. I hate when people do that. Um, Hello, means beautiful. Nice people, yeah, nice. Golden girl, better get back on the road. Thanks, Rhonda, nice to see you. Thank you, yeah. I hope so, positive vibes, man, positive vibes. Thank you, Maui. New languages are hard, especially Arabic. <laughs> Hot tea, the 7-Eleven, yeah. So much good snacks. I have to control myself sometimes. <laughs> but yeah. When does that ever happen? Uh, um, Teardrop, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Teardrop. He is funny. <laughs> thank you, and handsome. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> De rien. Très bien. Remember from the Simpsons? <laughs> Gracias. Thank you. Gracias. Real Thai tea. I know. I, I want to try real Thai tea, not as sweet. It's not bad, Maui Waui. It's, it's manageable. Uh-oh. She's yawning, so she's she's tired. Hey, guys. Come on, Stas. Hola. <laughs> the weather is a lot more manageable here. Like, it's, But not too bad, I guess. No, I don't think I still even eat as much as I was before I came here. Hey, babe. Well, I don't know. You work more than it, yeah. Okay, you know what? She's getting boring. I don't know what else is here. And you know what? I don't care. <laughs> she's getting especially boring. And I'm just I'm getting the vibe from her like she's getting tired. Like she's not really putting her attention on the chat anymore. She keeps looking over at him. Chantal, you have a live. There are people in front of you. You should be paying more attention to them. Then the person beside you, you can talk to him anytime. But if you've got limited time with your beezers, you'd be speaking to them. But, you know, she's done. 
Oh my God, that side profile is everything. Wow. That's just awful. <laughs> that is completely awful. Ah. All right, you know what? We're going to end it here. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this react. If you have, please like and subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you so much for being here and I hope you all have a great day. I'm going to see what else there is of Chantal's to catch up with. And then I've got work in a bit. So y'all take care. Please have a good one. Bye-bye.